Hello, welcome to this lesson of the uh, Engineering Mechanics Tutor in Statics. And what we have here is a problem on the board. It's kind of interesting. We're still adding vectors using their vector, uh, Cartesian vector notation, but this one's a little bit different. What we have is three vectors on the board. F1 is 325 newtons. It's going up at some angle that we're going to end up using this triangle to help us find that we've been doing on several of these problems. Um, we do have a vector F2, but we don't know what it is, and we don't know what angle it is. We've just drawn a placeholder for it, and we've given it a magnitude and a direction theta, but we really don't know what that is right now. Vector F3 is 600 newtons. It's angled 45 degrees down below the x-axis like that. So we have two of the vectors locked down and defined, magnitude plus direction. We do not know what F2 is. However, we're given a critical piece of information. The resultant, which means the summation of all three of these vectors, is 750 newtons directed along the x-axis, straight along the x-axis. All right, find F2, which means find the magnitude of F2, find the direction of F2. So in other words, if you think about it, I have a vector pointed up and a vector pointed down. They're different magnitudes. Now, if I start adding F2 in here, as I start playing around with the direction and the magnitude of F2, eventually if I choose the right one, I can make it such that the resultant of all three of them lie exactly across the, along the x-axis with a magnitude of 750 newtons. I know that I can have an F2, a vector F2 that makes that summation along the x-axis with that magnitude, but I just need to find out what it is. So a lot of students, um, when they're confronted with this kind of problem, they get confused because, you know, in all the problems we've done so far, we've had two or three vectors, and it's very mechanical. You get their components, you add it together, you get the resultant. Well, when you're confronted with a problem like this, where you kind of are given part of the resultant and you have to find one of the other vectors, you just need to proceed as usual. The only thing that's tricky is you have to keep F2 and the angle theta as variables in your analysis. And at the end of the day, you're going to end up solving for F2 and solving for theta to make the constraint come true. So the best advice I could give you is just proceed as normal. So let's just pretend that we don't Pretend that this problem is just like all the other ones before. Let's work in the x direction. Let's work in the x direction. So for vector f1, we have a problem right away. We don't know what its angle is, but we know something about this little triangle here. So for f1, the angle of f1, the uh, angle theta, if you were to measure this to the x-axis like this, is going to be the inverse tangent of y over x. So 12 over 5, that's the definition of the tangent uh, guy. And when you take 12 over 5 and you take